the burgeoning field of subcompact crossovers, the Buick Encore stands out for a couple of important reasons. For one, compared with its many competitors, it has an upscale aura, particularly inside. But whether we can refer to it as luxurious depends on your definition of that term. We think it's not quite there, so we'll settle on calling it premium, an industry word used to describe vehicles that aren't quite classifiable as luxury but aren't far from it. Two, the Encore coddles occupants with a surprisingly supple ride given its short wheelbase as well as exceptionally low interior noise levels and upscale interior appointments, part of an overhaul for 2017 that also includes updated exterior sheets metal. Those traits may not necessarily qualify the Encore as luxury, but they are subliminal elements in vehicles we regard as premium. Turbo 4s are not quite twins, the Encore offers two engine choices, both 1.4-litre four-cylinders, both turbocharged, both long-stroke designs, yet one is standard and the other is an upgrade option. There are significant distinctions. For example, the base engine has a slightly smaller bore, a little less displacement 1,364 cubic centimetres versus 1,399. A lower compression ratio 9.5 to 1 versus 10.0 colon 1, and poured rather than direct fuel injection. The net result of these differences is a power disparity that may seem modest but in the realm of this small fry is significant, 138 horsepower and 148 lbft of torque for the base version. 153 horsepower and 177 lbft for the upgrade. The higher output engine is an $895 option on the Sport Touring trim level as well as, in ascending order, the Prefer 2, Essence, and Premium. It can be had either with front or all-wheel drive. It's not available on the two lowest priced versions, the base trim and the preferred. Note that even the upgrade engine is not the hottest power plant in the segment. The Kia Soul Turbo 201 horsepower and the Nissan Juke 188 ponies have a lot more punch, and they get off the line with greater urgency. The Jeep Renegade offers a 180 horsepower 2.4 litre, but in rugged Trailhawk trim it's pudgy at nearly 3,600 pounds and a tad lethargic. But while the Encore, even with the higher output engine, is not the quickest little pony in the subcompact corral, it's not the slowest either. In our recent test of a front-drive sport touring Encore, we recorded a 0 to 60 mph time of 7.8 seconds and a 16.2 second quarter mile at 86 miles per hour. We characterized those results as peppy, noting that it was the quickest Encore we tested. Adding all-wheel drive, of course, adds mass. This all-wheel drive sport touring weighed in at 3,382 pounds versus 3,244 for our front drive example. We photographed an Encore Premium. And the inevitable consequence of greater mass is slower acceleration, in this case 8.4 seconds to 60 and 16.6 seconds through the quarter mile at 83 miles per hour. Those results don't really constitute peppiness but they are better than the standard version of this engine achieved in an all-wheel drive Encore. And they're acceptable by the standards of the AWD models in this class. Comfort-oriented dynamics, in any case, it's clear that getting pinned against the seat back isn't part of the appeal with these vehicles. But on other portions of the dynamic scorecard the all-wheel drive Encore acquits itself pretty well. Brisk maneuvers bring an abundance of rock and roll but the steering is reasonably quick 2.8 turns lock toe lock and more tactile in some. And the payoff for suspension tuning that favors compliance over roll stiffness is ride quality that's benign even on washboard and paved roads. We weren't able to document grip for this Encore due to snowy weather conditions, but expect it to be similar to the SoSo 0.81 grams recorded by the front drive model. On the other hand, its 166 foot stopping distance from 70 miles per hour is among the best in the class. Fuel economy, though, is unremarkable, we logged 22 miles per gallon, as is the performance of the six speed automatic transmission. It includes a manual shifting function, operable by a thumb switch atop the shift lever, that is not at all tempting to employ. 
at least the engine's auto stop start function is one of the more seamless in the business, which is good, because, as in almost all Buicks, it can't be switched off. Consistent with its emphasis on comfort, the Encore is quiet, and, as we observed in our test of the front drive version, its interior updates for 2017 create a more upscale aura than what's found in the rank and file players in this arena. The Encore's pricing drives home its more if the mainstream, not quit a luxury status. A sport touring all-wheel drive model like our test car starts at $28,885, right about where most of the volume brand competition leaves off, although it remains several thousand dollars shy of starting figures for on size all-wheel drive European rivals such as the Audi Q3 $34,850. The BMW X1 $36,095, and the Mercedes Benz GLA Class $35,775. The Encore was the Buick division's best seller in 2016, with 78,565 rolling out of US dealer showrooms. Premium pricing, premium persona. The Encore seems to have a formula that works. A with the crossover boom exploding. It's easy to overlook the budding albeit still tiny rudder station wagon segment. Previously, this space was the sole territory of the Volvo V60 Cross Country and the venerable Subaru Outback. The former was new to the US in 2015, but a lot has changed both in the market and in this car since we tested a 2016 model. Specifically, Audi's A4-based Alrod returned after a brief hiatus. And Volkswagen introduced the Golf Sport Wagon based Golf Altrack, doubling the Volvo's competition. You might wonder how cars that span in base price from $26,520 to $44,950 directly compete. Simple, this quartet of lifted station wagons chases essentially the same buyers. And not only do most of these wagons share similar dimensions, save for the plus size outback. Prices for loaded versions of the VW and, especially, the Subaru can nearly overlap with lower spec iterations of the Audi and the Volvo. Among this group, what really sets the cross country apart is its age. By far the oldest, the Volvo's underlying V60 wagon has been largely unchanged since 2010. It wasn't available in the US until spring 2014, and the likely modified cross country arrived two years ago. Facing fresh rivals, the V60 receives a timely injection of newness under hood. Although the V60's skeleton stays the same for 2017, the turbocharged and Lin 5 engine and 6 speed automatic are replaced by a turbocharged 2.0 litre drive V4 cylinder and an 8 speed automatic transmission. The move in which the old engine's T5 designation carries over to the four-cylinder model is part of Volvo's effort to eradicate engines with more than four cylinders from its lineup. Also, the regular V60 received the engine in 2015. More or less engine? Volvo's 2.0-litre drive the engine seeds 10 horsepower and 8 lbft of torque for totals of 240 and 258 to the outgoing inland 5. Despite this, the 2017 V60 Cross Country is 0.2 second quicker to 60 miles per hour 6.2 seconds and through the quarter mile 14.8 seconds than the 2016 5 cylinder we tested. Both figures better those put up by the Golf Valtrack and the Outback but are several tenths behind our estimates for the Al Road, which we've not yet taken to the track. All other things being roughly equal between this car and the five banger, including weight, credit for the 2017 Cross Country's extra zip goes to the new 8-speed automatic. The automatic's first six gears are shorter than their counterparts in the old transmission, bolstering a feline scoot. Fuel economy also improves, and the new top gear is taller than before for lower in highway cruising. Our V60 Cross Country posted a respectable 22 miles per gallon average fuel economy during our time with the car, 2 miles per gallon better than the 2016 Cross Country. The wagon's EPA fuel economy estimates also improve, 
rising from 20 miles per gallon in the city and 28 miles per gallon on the highway to 2,230 miles per gallon. Whereas the now defunct turbocharged and Lin 5 could moan somewhat unpleasantly, the Turbo 4 puts out entirely normal sounds, serving up a little growl at higher RPM and a far away hum at lower engine speeds. The new engine is also quieter at full throttle, by a lot. We measured 73 decibels in the cabin, compared with 79. The rest of the V60 cross-country driving experience is unchanged. Ride motions are neatly controlled by the sorted, firmly sprung suspension, although this platinum spec cross-country's large e-diameter wheels and low-profile tires contributed to flinty initial impact harshness over expansion joints and potholes. Those flashy rollers also reduce the V60 cross-country's already limited advantage in off-road ability over, say, a regular V60. Although it sits 2.5 inches higher off the ground than a plain or V60, the cross-country still has a run-off the all-wheel drive system and just 7.9 inches of ground clearance and outback has 8.7 inches of clearance underneath. Stick with the base model cross-country and install a profile rubber if you plan on chasing sunsets via top tracks. Same mold, same wagon, for a platform so advanced in years, the V60 continues to impress with its solidity. The interior is well assembled, with supremely comfortable front seats and plenty of soft touch materials. The dashboard's vent layout one large central vent, two facing the front seat passenger, and another catering to the driver and Baroque forms remain attractive almost seven years after their debut. Using the knobs and buttons set into the dashboard, on the other hand, is an exercise in futility. Key functions radio, navigation, etc. are accessed via an arch of shortcut buttons draped atop a cluster of other similarly sized buttons. These are all crammed next to one another with no space between, like the keypad on an old cell phone. This ergonomic mess lives beneath a small central display that lacks touch controls and on which information is haphazardly furnished in small fonts. On the plus side, there is an actual volume knob as well as a tuning knob that doubles as a controller for scrolling through submenus. Volvo's latest models, XC90, S90, and V90, employ a vertically arranged touchscreen that's more modern and simpler to use and we anticipate something similar in the S60 V60 replacement due in late 2018 the sedan will be assembled in South Carolina. The infotainment isn't the only thing that's outdated, the V60 is a mid-size wagon as defined in the mid aughts In the decade since the V60's initial development, many mid-size competitors have grown larger, casting the cross-country's interior room in less flattering light. Rear seat space is relatively tight, with a low bottom cushion and limited near room for adults, and the Volvo's 93 cubic feet of overall passenger volume is actually one cubic foot shy of the smaller on the outside Volkswagen Golf Valtrax. The similarly priced Audi Road is larger than the Volvo inside and out, while the far less expensive and larger Subaru Outback is the roomiest tall wagon out there. The luxury brand Audi is this Volvo's only competitor on price but the V60 brings to the table no special features that set it apart from either the Golf Valtrac or the Outback. Besides stuff like leather and fancier trimmings, the Volkswagen, Audi, and Subaru all offer the same active safety features, such as automated emergency braking and forward collisions warning. But those bits aren't standard on the cross-country, which strikes us as odd for safety-obsessed Volvo. On our test car, they came with a 3 $1,850 platinum trim package, which, in addition to adaptive cruise control, alarm keeping function, automatic high beam control, and xenon headlights that turn with the front wheels, also added luxury upgrades such as a Harman Kardon audio system, a proximity key, and a Homelink garage door opener. Blind spot monitoring is part of a separate $925 option group that includes front and rear parking sensors. Heated seats, too, are optional, part of a $1,550 bundle that includes a heated steering wheel, heated outboard rear seats, and built-in child booster seats in the back row.
along with $595 in special paint and $750 for the aforementioned 19-inch wheels. Our cross country is already steep $42,695 base price ballooned to $50,365. The new engine and transmission do help the cross country stave off some of the effects of old age, if only dynamically. Still, considering the more modern and more useful alternatives out there, only a true Volvophile, or perhaps those smitten by this car's handsome styling and in-betweener size will find a V60 cross-country compelling at these prices.